as Stephen A. mentioned it earlier, Joe Harris is not going to miss a million shots. He's one of the best shooters in the game. Uh, Kevin Durant was missing. Um, Kyrie did not have his best game. And beyond all of that, they didn't have James Harden. Without James, look, James Harden, how, how, do, how do we put this? He creates more high percentage shots than anyone ever because you have to include him in that percentage. You know, Ben Simmons will create high percentage shots for others and he could take it in the paint and everything, but can't shoot at all. Harden can shoot from everywhere. He, he can get his own shot at historically elite levels and he can convert those shots at historically elite levels from anywhere on the floor. And he creates high percentage shots for his teammates at historically elite levels. So you add that to this mixture of talent, the, the most talented team of all time, with D'Antoni on the bench. Like, think of who's on that bench. Steve Nash, Mike D'Antoni, and James Harden. Mm -hmm. Mike D'Antoni has a system. First, he ran it to near perfection with Steve Nash. Then he tweaked it and ran it with James Harden. Th that team is built to run that system with Harden as the head of the snake and these dudes as the weapons. And when they do that, it's a joke. They're so good, even without him, they'll beat the Bucks. But we're talking about last night, the offense lacked cohesion. It lacked their point guard, particularly down the stretch of that game. It lacked a, 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 a game plan. And with James Harden, they have that and they're unbeatable. As I religiously say, you're wrong, but what else is new? Last night in Milwaukee, the referees allowed the level of physicality they didn't allow in the first two games. It was back in Milwaukee. Milwaukee tried to big boy them because they know that's your only chance. That's why P.J. Tucker got in KD's face and all of this other stuff. These are the kind of things that happen when you're going up against a juggernaut that's relatively a finesse team and you know skill-wise you simply can't hang with them. What do you do? You get physical. This is why the Pistons and everybody, used, you know, people was complaining about the Pistons, but the Pistons were the bad boys and relished that title. And then the NBA tried to modify the rules, but then Pat Riley comes. At first you inherit the Ken Bannisters of the world. Remember him? And then after that, you got Charles Oakley, Isaiah Mason. McDaniel, Charles Smith, Anthony and Mason, you and Anthony Mason, and the Hoku God rest his wonderful soul. You got all of that going on, even with John Stark. Derek yeah, Harper. Even John Stark, yeah. Derek Harper. But these brothers were no punks. And so you got physical. And what did people say? It was unattractive, making the game more physical, not as appealing to the viewing eye, blah, 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 blah. And a lot of people think that had a lot to do with the insurgence of European players coming to the NBA. I don't believe that for one second. I think they took them to Barcelona. It was always Commissioner David Stern, God rest his soul, his vision to really globalize the sport of basketball. And they successfully went about the business of doing it and major, major props to them. Having said all of that, last night, they got physical, and they were allowed to get physical, and that knocked them off a little bit. But I ask you this question, Max Kellerman, and it doesn't require an answer. A simple nod will do. Le uh, Kevin Durant played with, with James Harden at the very early stages of James Harden's career. Kevin Durant is a 27-point-per-game scorer on 49% shooting and 38% from three-point range. Did most of that come with James Harden without not being his teammate? I believe it did. How about Kyrie Irving? He's a career 23, 22.8 to be exact, but basically a career 23-point-per-game scorer who's averaged at least 24 to 25 a game over the last several years. This is his first season playing. And by the way, he's a career 47% shooter from the field. This particular season is his first with James Harden. If I'm correct, I think I'm correct in that saying that, right? Kyrie? Yes, yes, this is his first year. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that the kind of things that you're talking about with James Harden are not false, but they're still somewhat irrelevant because the greatness of a KD and the greatness of a Kyrie Irving, they make high and low percentage shots. Yeah. They make contested and uncontested shots. Mm -hmm. So the point that I'm trying to make is that even though James Harden is as skilled as he is, and when he's on the floor and Kyrie's willingness to defer and make sure he's the point guard and Kyrie will be the scoring guard, play the role in how these nets look, it doesn't take away from the reality that when James Harden is not there, you're not asking KD and Kyrie to do something they didn't build their careers no, me, on and are accustomed way. to doing. Let me put it another way. That's all it is. Let me put it another way. Um, if James Harden were playing, did they lose that game last night? Well, I don't think so, but what I'm saying to you is That's this. That's what I'm saying. Wait a minute. There are times in James Harden's career, Kyrie Irving's career, KD's career, where you take a night off. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Now, this discussion that we're having now, 
I stand down, Max, if Milwaukee comes back and do the same thing in game four. It's not a big deal for one well, game. I don't know if they'll but do it, but, but one they, game. They, look, look. I'm just saying it's one game. The Nets aren't losing this series. I'm no, not no, saying I'm not that. talking about the series. I'm just talking about a game. It may happen in another game. It's it not going to happen in another I, I think, game. I think it could happen in two out of these. It's not going to happen in another game. Six games. It's not going to happen. Not hard. that. I'll point if they out. lose, it's going to be them scoring over 100. Is what I'm saying. Look, I was, they go score 83. I again. was never the biggest Harden fan, but I saw what he did. But I wasn't anti. I just, you know, I thought he choked. But he was normally a great player. I don't think he choked. I understand. We we used to debate about that. But I'll say this, once Harden became a real point guard, when he didn't have to worry about scoring 50 to win anymore, and he had weapons like KD and Kyrie, and he could orchestrate the offense, he went from averaging 34, 36 points a game to with Brooklyn this year, not even 25 points a game. But it was the best I've ever seen him play. His mastery of the offense was almost comical. And with James Harden, they almost never lost. But Kyrie and KD... They didn't have a great record without Harden. I know it's regular season. I know they're better than the Bucs even without him. If to, to Harden is the thing that makes this team completely unbeatable. They're unbeatable if Harden's on, there. When he's not there, they're more beatable. Well, again, they were, and the reason why I say this, they won games one and two without Harden. So you don't lose game three. Yeah, but only by like 45 I'm points. Saying, but you don't lose game three because you don't have Harden. If you won mm. games one and two because you had uh. You lost game three because, essentially, the physicality got to you, and you took a night off. Yeah. Offensively. Yeah, you were missing shots. You took a night. You 86 listen. also is the lowest points we've had in a win of any game all season. You took a night off. Yeah. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.